Long live the bull market, says Pablo. Pablo and I are going to read from Brian Westbury's uh, most recent Monday morning uh, eco- economic commentary from, uh, this is just two days ago. Long live the bull market. Last December, almost 12 months ago, we set our year-end 2019 target for the S&P at 3100 Many thought we were crazy, crazy, but our model for the stock market suggests that 3100 was well within reach. We believe the bull market had plenty of room to run. Now, with six weeks to go until the end of the year, the market has already uh, exceeded that. And as of Friday, it was up 24.5% year-to-date and 32.7% since Christmas Eve low, because that was the end of the uh, that short-term bear market, 20% down from October to Christmas Eve. So then we raised our targets to 3250 in the middle of 2019. And here it is right now, as of right now, at 10.03 a.m. Eastern, the S&P is at 3116. 31, one, you all can see that. 3116 down three uh, points today. So they raised their target to 3250, which is only 4.2% above uh, last Friday's close. With one possible and very unlikely exception, nothing we see on the horizon suggests the bull market is nearing the end. We're forecasting moderate growth for the foreseeable future and continued corporate profit growth as margins stay high. Monetary policy is not tight. And we don't see any hikes to short-term interest rates through at least 2020. After many years of 6% M2, M2 has accelerated, growing at a 9.2% annualized pace over the last six months, which is certainly inflationary, not deflationary. Corporate America is still adapting to a much more favorable tax environment, and trade policy is likely to get better rather than worse. The new NAFTA looks likely to pass by early next year, in part because as the Democrats uh, target President Trump with impeachment, it becomes more important for them to reach some sort of bipartisan goal. House Speaker Pelosi recently described a political deal on the trade pact as imminent. Mexico and Canada are the U.S. number one and two trading partners. I was actually surprised to read Mexico is number one. That's interesting. A deal with number four, Japan, is being worked out and is already benefiting the U.S. Meanwhile, reports suggest a deal with China, which is our number three, is approaching. Want more reasons for optimism? Yes. Yes, we do, Pablo. Yes, we do. (laughs) The ball and chain of regulation continues to ease around the ankles of our entrepreneurs. And the surge in the appointment of federal judges who believe in legislation, not administrative regulation, will make it tougher for the administrative state to hamstring innovation. I just read today that Trump has flipped three or two of the circuit courts, the sixth, the second, and the third, and the ninth is coming. The ninth, the crazy people on the ninth, that is is this close to being flipped to a conservative majority. Elections matter, my friend. Elections matter. So you might hate Trump because he's vulgar. He says stuff that makes me cringe. Uh, as you're watching uh, your various Netflix things and stuff. And blah, Trump. Oh. At the end of the day, elections matter. Uh <laughs> And this is why the Senate, the funny thing is the House went to the Dems in 2018. The Senate went to the Republicans, which is the first time essentially in history this has ever happened, where the incumbent party not only uh, did not lose, but they expanded their majority in the Senate by taking out incumbent Democratic senators. I don't think it's ever happened before, at least not the extent in the the modern era, which is not. So Trump solidified his Senate, which means that the nominations that he can put up, the judges, are going to be more conservative-minded, more libertarian, free-minded than uh, if he, if the Democrats would have taken control of the Senate. So the two, uh, you want the Senate because they will confirm his judges, which will be on the uh, in the political realm a whole lot longer than freaking Nancy Pelosi, which is uh, which is great. So I, I could not be happier that the uh, the the Senate is a, is going through like a just gangbuster. And you got to give credit to Mitch McConnell, man. I, I'm stunned to say that that McConnell. Um, he risked everything on Trump winning, and uh, he risked everything, you know, because they had Merrick Garland uh, ready to go, and he was considered a moderate for the Democrats, which isn't moderate at all. And, and uh, McConnell said, "No, we're going to wait. We're going to wait it out." Huge, huge gamble. And won. All right. In addition, uh, consumers have plenty of reason for purchase, plenty of purchasing power, both from wage and relatively low financial obligations. Home builders still need to raise the price, the pace of construction, just to keep up with population growth. And the scrappage of homes, which include uh, the natural disasters. 
Notice, too, that the U.S. isn't alone in the stock market rally. The euro stocks is up net about 20%. And the Nikkei is up 18.2%. We think those gains, at least in part, reflect investors looking ahead and expecting better pauses. By cutting tax rates and regulation, the U.S. has become more competitive. Eventually, the political pressure on other countries will follow suit. When Reagan and Thatcher cut taxes in the 80s, many other countries took the cue, which led to a global boom. One thing that could throw a monkey wrench to the bull market would be a shift by voters towards less growth-oriented policies. Uh, this would take a sweep of the White House, House and Senate with politicians willing to pass the votes. We put the odds of this happening at roughly 5%. We know investors are worried about it, but it's way too early and way too unlikely to change investment strategies at this point. And it really you shouldn't anyway. If anything is history showing us anything is no matter what the political <coughs> beings are in the uh, as long as they're not socialistic outright, you, 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 you should not uh, allow the dogma of your investments, of your politics to cloud your investment decisions. You shouldn't. Uh, so think about a sweep. Uh, like this would cut the stock market by 25%, but has only a 5% chance of occurring. That's a drag of only one and a quarter, a quarter percent on the market. A year ago, we were in the distinct minority and remaining bullish. While so many were predicting the supposed sugar high was over and a bear market had begun, we didn't see it that way and we don't see it now. Stocks are still cheap. The economy is not slipping in a recession. The policy environment is tilted more towards growth than it was three years ago, even though it could be better. But that means the bull market should continue. Could not, uh, right on, right on Westbury. And then we come right there. Housing starts increased 3.8% in October. Uh, following a dip in September, housing starts returned to growth in October. The key driver of the 2019 recovery in re residential construction continues to be single family starts, which posted a fifth consecutive month of growth in, uh, in October. More broadly, single-family starts have been on a general upward trend since the bottom of February and are splitting distance, of, splitting distance of new highs. So good stuff across the board. Um, no reason to be a pessimist, in my opinion. Obviously, anything can change, but if Pablo is still sleeping, when Pablo gets anxious, that's the one you know to get nervous, and he's not anxious. All right, we'll see ya.